Good afternoon. My name is Alina Shautsova. I am an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. Today I would like to share a secret with you. A secret of how to win an immigration waiver. If you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with the waiver issue. It is because maybe uh, your CIS or consular officer told you to present a waiver, or maybe your family member is in need of a waiver. Or maybe it is because a family member who went for uh, an immigrant visa interview received a denial stating that a waiver is available. Or maybe you already tried to submit a waiver and it was denied. First of all, I would like to tell you that even if your waiver was denied, in many cases you can either appeal the denial or resubmit an application for a waiver. Is it possible, people ask me, is it possible to win a waiver once it was already denied? Of course it is. So what is the secret of winning a waiver after a denial, of winning a waiver, immigration waiver in general? The secret is in storytelling. The secret is to present a compelling story, in my case, for my client, that will explain client's life and lives of people around my client and present it in a way that is logical and understandable as to why the person has to stay in the United States or be allowed to come to the United States. Indeed, storytelling is very important. That is why I believe many, many waivers are denied. It's not because the person did not meet what's called a statutory eligibility for the waiver. It is because the person could not explain well enough why his loved ones in the United States would need them and why the person's presence in the United States is so essential and how lives of the person, of the people around the immigrant will be changed if the immigrant is not allowed to come to the United States or not allowed to remain in, in, in the United States. To present a compelling waiver, first of all, you need to know statutory eligibility criteria. You need to know, well, in which cases the waiver will be granted. And different waivers call for different criteria. Sometimes it should be a special qualifying relative. Sometimes a person has to spend a certain amount of years in the United States or past, I'm sorry, not in the United States, but um, after, let's say, a, a conviction, a uh, certain amount of years should pass after the conviction and the person has to prove rehabilitation. Sometimes it's different criteria, like I for, for, for example, for I-601A waiver, nowadays you can argue two points. Why a person uh, a U.S. citizen, a permanent resident, a relative will experience hardship if he has to or she has to travel with an immigrant uh, outside of the United States, or why a person who is a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident would experience extreme hardship if the immigrant is not allowed to stay in the United States. You see, there are different legal criteria that you need to know when you start working on a waiver whether you're working with an attorney or whether you're working by yourself. Some people tell me, well, it's just a hardship letter, right? We just need to write a hardship letter. No, it's not right. There is no such a thing as a hardship letter. There is what I call a life story. You and your spouse will need to, most likely, spouse or child, will need to submit your life stories. You have to put on a paper all your emotions, all things that happened to you, everything that you went through coming to this particular point and tell the USAS officer who will never see you because the waiver is decided on the paper how it is, why it's essential for you and for your loved one to remain in the United States. And this is the key to win a waiver. The rest evidence, the rest of the evidence is also very important. But I believe that without this life story, you will not be able to present, put this evidence in the right puzzle pieces so that USCIS officer will understand and be convinced that you deserve to remain in the United States. Of course, to the life story, you need to add 
hardship evidence. First of all, as you probably already know, it's medical, evidence of various medical conditions, if you have some. Evidence of psychological conditions, if, if, you, if, you, can, if you can present those. Financial evidence. People say, well, every instruction say that uh, financial evidence are not that important. I disagree. I say that financial evidence are very important. In fact, there are, there are fees that call specifically for financial evidence. Evidence of how hard it would be for a US citizen or lawful permanent resident to support themselves or whoever they have to support else in the United States without an immigrant. Very important. Evidence of mortgage, credit card debt, evidence of various bills, utility bills, grocery, I mean groceries uh, that, that, that you buy to show this is the immigrant and this is what he's paying for, or helps, uh, this is what he's paying uh, for the U.S. Uh, citizen or lawful permanent resident. This is how he or she is helping them financially. This evidence has to be summarized and presented in a very clear, very clean, very understandable manner, almost like a chart. And of course, then we can present all other evidence, letters of support, letters of good moral character, letters of volunteering, and so on. But without spending time with the immigrant and his family, or her family, I would never learn what else I can present. Sometimes people have unique circumstances that you will not find on online search websites or forums that explain what evidence you can submit. And only by talking to person, knowing them better, we will be able to say, ha, oh, this is an interesting point. This is something that we can use. For example, a very active involvement in church, more than just regularly attending church meetings and, and, and sessions. Something else can be a very valuable point that may make a difference in your waiver application. It can be anything. But as I said at the beginning, the secret is a life story. How to write a life story? Of course, if you're not a um, uh, renowned, renowned poet or, or author of novels, it, it will be difficult for you. But basically, I suggest my clients to start with a simple um, chronological events. But, but imagine you are you're trying to, to apply for a job or, or simply tell your life story to somebody. What are you going to put on that paper? date of your birth, of course, then you will describe your childhood, your relationship with parents. What points to focus when you are um, writing this life story will actually depend on uh, what accents you're going to make in your waiver application. And this is an art in itself. Well, I hope this little video was a little bit helpful to, for you and you can learn more information about I-601 a waivers and success stories and other waivers, success stories for the waivers on our website www.shotsofa.com. Thank you.